Hey, it's Greg Otten here, and this is an episode from the very first season of the Maritime Gardening Podcast. I've been doing this for a number of years now, and you can listen to the current season at my podcast website, uh, maritimegardening.com. It's completely free. Uh, but I thought I'd put the older episodes, uh, start putting the older episodes up on my YouTube channel for people that just prefer to consume online content in that way. So we'll give that a try, and if people seem to be enjoying it, I'll keep doing it. And if you really enjoy it, you can go to my website, maritimegardening.com, and listen to any one of the episodes I've ever done, or the current season. So, have a listen. You're listening to the maritimegardening.com podcast, episode 11. Okay, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the MaritimeGardening.com podcast. I'm Dave Doggett, and uh, we're joined again by Greg Otten. How you doing, Greg? Oh, I'm doing great. Excellent. So I gather, uh, you know, gardening season is well underway, and uh, the weather's been a little wonky, and you've you've had various ideas on your mind and things that have come up and frustrations, and uh, so that's how you came up with today's episode title i guess we want to say which is hodgepodge hodgepodge mm. and i guess it makes sense to start off on a positive note and just talk <laughs> about hodgepodge for a minute because uh for those that uh have never had the pleasure of, of hodgepodge it's i guess it's a baby vegetable chowder that's the simplest way of yeah that's what describing it, it you go into your garden early in the season and you get everything little and it's about, you could make a hodgepodge now. Um, uh, I don't have all the ingredients that, uh, it really depends on what's going on in your garden. Certainly, uh, you wouldn't have any beans right now. Mm. Um, well, maybe, depending on where you live, certainly where I live, um, beans are not uh, even flowered yet. Mm. Uh, but I've got potatoes now that are about the size of plums, and I've got, you know, I've got asparagus, and I've got onion greens, and i got little baby carrots and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you're, if you've never had it before, look up a recipe online in Nova Scotian hodgepodge or mm. New Brunswick. I don't know if, how much the recipes change from place to place. Imagine it's pretty, pretty universal. It's just, you know, a lot of fresh baby vegetables and like half a cup of heavy cream and a, like a half a cup of butter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, I remember... I remember my mother serving that when I was a kid, and I looked at it and was disgusted. Did uh, you eat it? I, I, I had to eat it. I ate part of it. I probably did. But right now, as you're explaining it, it's something that uh, it, uh, my mouth is watering. So Oh, it's so luxurious when yeah. it's done right. Uh, yeah. I can, unfortunately, I over the course of my 30s, I progressively became uh, lactose intolerant. Uh, That's kind of like a for anyone that's experienced it, it's kind of like a slow death. Um, <laughs> it's like a, a death, the death of a, a food category. Well, it would be. It's, it would be. Our whole culture revolves around milk mm. and products, so mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to. Uh, I, I've not found a way to to make it that tastes. I don't even bother now. <laughs> There's nothing that's good. All this the alternatives, milk, soy milk, and. Yeah. You know, uh, whatever these. Yeah. I mean, soy milk is beans. Yeah. Bean. It's bean milk with with sugar in it. I've often wondered how they get <laughs> how they get milk out of a bean, but you know, hey, what do I know? I think they just like smush it up, and it looks white, so they call that. It's not misnomer. It's not milk, right? It's just no. white stuff. Yeah. White stuff that has a texture that's similar. And then they put a whole bunch of different flavors and sugars into it, so yeah. it tastes good. Yeah, and without hey. the sugar, it tastes. Uh, awful yeah, yeah so yeah. um anyway i didn't want to go on a rant no no that's cool it's a funny rant milk milk substitutes yeah and uh you're yeah, just bitter anyone, that's all oh and the stuff they call lactose free milk it isn't it's just got lactase added to it so it's uh they should really do a thing on marketplace about yeah, that yeah yeah you're lactose intolerant and you drink lactose free milk you will get you'll get a really bad stomach ache and um. other effects <laughs> <laughs> Tested and proven. Not worth it. No. Um, anyway, uh, so hodgepodge. Episode, 
hodgepodge. And if your garden is there and you've got the right uh, right ingredients, uh, go for it. It's there's nothing like hodgepodge. I really miss it. Awesome, uh, awesome. But uh, so because it's hodgepodge, like hodgepodge, I'm going to talk about a number of things that were sort of on my mind that are. Uh, topical for this stage of the growing season and this stage of the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, the first one was, uh, and this really isn't a vegetable gardening thing, but it's 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 related to permaculture. It's it's maintaining your lawn. Okay. We all have some sort of. If you have a property, you probably have a lawn. Yep. Um, I have a lawn. Mm-hmm. I would rather not have a lawn. There's, I think, there's nothing less. So would I. Nothing less sustainable than a lawn. It just yeah. does not, you know, grass wants to be in a field. Mm-hmm. doesn't want to be cut and mowed and yeah. walked on. It wants to be in a giant field. And, you know, it's, it's grazed on. Just the way we manage it isn't the way they work in nature at all. Right. Um, so it's sort of artificial and you have to do all kinds of things to keep it looking good. But you have to have a lawn if you want to retain the value in your home. So you're yes. sort of this thing. Um, so... You know, it's been really hot lately and haven't had a lot of rain. And I see a lot of people out mowing their lawn right down to the ground like a golf mm-hmm. course. Mm-hmm. And I got to say, that's just the if you want a healthy lawn, you put your mower on the highest setting you can. Um, that will benefit your lawn. I mean, grass wants to be tall, it's always trying to get tall. And if you look at any grass in nature, it's as high as it can get. It's waist high practically, right? Yeah. And it needs to be tall so that. It can cast shade on the soil and keep the soil from drying out because grass likes water. Um, so, I mean, you're not going to have it waist high, especially where we are, because you'd be you'd be tick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. But I mean, if it's a matter of get it, if you can get it an inch or two higher, you know, um, I guarantee you, if you keep it a little bit higher, um, keep your put your mower on the highest setting it can go to, you will have um, less of the lawn going brown. And it, it's almost counterintuitive because the grass is longer. You think it would need more water mm. uh, because there's more grass. But because it's longer, it's casting more shade on the ground. Yeah. So that helps retain the water in your soil. Mm. Uh, and the other thing is uh, use a mulching blade. And these are all things I didn't know. You know, that's why I'm saying that some people probably know this stuff. And it's like, oh, of course, right. I know. Right? Why are you telling this? Some people don't know this and they just go on forever doing things the same way and I've, I've, I just bumbled my way through finding this stuff out over time. Right. Um, so change the blade on your mower. Put a mowing blade. A lot of mowers have this thing on the side, and it chucks the stuff out the side. Yeah. Right? I mean, does yours have one of those, Dave? Um, I do believe. I've got a, I've also got a one with a bag on the back. I had that on for a while, but I took it off not too long ago. The bag, too. Yeah. So, and, you know, what I used to do was... I would put the I would close the side down and I'd put the bag on and I'd mow it once every two or three weeks because I hated mowing my lawn mm-hmm. and all the stuff would go in the bag and I'd dump it somewhere. Yep. And I mean, think about grass is a nitrogen hog. It loves nitrogen and takes nitrogen out of your soil at a ridiculous rate and you have to keep fertilizing it to keep it uh, to keep it green or to keep it healthy. Um, you know, if, if the nitrogen level drops in your soil, the grass becomes weak. And the clover and dandelions and every other bloody thing that's flying around in the air and the seeds, um, those things start taking over your lawn and your lawn isn't perfect anymore. Mine, mine certainly isn't perfect anymore. Um, fine with me because a perfect lawn is practically impossible to maintain anyway. A little bit of clover in there. Um, clover puts nitrogen in the soil anyway, so grass and clover sort of, they're natural bedfellows anyway. Right. So if you're just trying to keep Romeo and Juliet apart. They belong together. So yeah. Uh, Almost better. You're better off just, just giving into it, because um, there's clover seeds are everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. Instead of putting the bag on, it's it. Uh, I can tell you, it is a lot easier. It doesn't seem this way because you have to do it often, but it is easier to mow your lawn once a week with no bag and with all the sides closed. So you can. Most mowers come with the thing that goes on the side to chuck the right. grass out, the chucker. Yeah. Yeah. Or it comes with a hole in the back for the bag. Yeah. You close the hole in the back and you close the thing on the side and you get a different kind of blade on there called a mm. mulching blade. Mm. And what will happen is when you're mowing over the grass, it's going to chuck the grass up to the top of the mower and back down and it's going to cut it up really, really fine. 
instead of just cutting the grass, it's gonna like like a blender. Yeah. And so it'll all fall back on. Oh yeah, I need one of those. After you cut it, hmm. and uh, what that does, it's a mulch, right? And so all that nitrogen the grass took out of the soil, it's gonna go back in. And also because you're mulching a little bit, it's gonna keep the sun off the soil, mm-hmm. and again help retain water in your soil. Right. So that's 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 my advice, you know. Uh, and regardless of the size, I mean, I've read where it says do this when it's hot or in the middle of summer. No, do it all season long. Keep put your mower as high as it will go. Yeah. Use a mulching blade. Mow it once a week. You know, and let, I mean, don't mow it once a week if it's not growing. Yeah. But if it's grown at all, mow it once a week, and um, and do it. Uh, also, do it in the evening. I mean, mowing is a stress, right? You're yes. you're cutting grass. Yeah. So it's better to stress the grass right before it, the sun goes down, so it can sort of recuperate. You know, in the evening there's mists and it's cooler and it's not as intense, so mm-hmm. it can sort of recuperate a bit before the next day's sun hits it. So it's always yeah. better to mow in the evening. Yeah. Instead of like you know at the height of the afternoon. I mean, it's also easier on you instead of being out there in the full sun, getting hammered by mm. you know uh, the sun gods. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So that's a little bit on uh, maintaining a lawn, and if you do that, that should decrease your need to to add um, amendments to. So you're still going to need to put probably a nitrogen fertilizer twice a year, and you're probably yeah. still going to need to put uh, lime twice a year, right? Because we get all this wonderful acid rain. Mm. Uh, but maybe you don't need to fertilize three times a year. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> you know, or as often. Yeah. Uh, all right, so that's that's lawn mowing. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is, and I can't speak for every part of the Maritimes, but I know where I am. Uh, things have not worked out the way they have in ideal years in terms of germinations or right. uh, success rates. I mean, some things are growing fine, and they, like my, my potatoes came in like, I've never had problems with potatoes, I've always been really lucky with that. They came in like clockwork, you know, right. um, they came in great, um, but for instance, I had a lot of beans just rot in the ground, even beans I planted the first of June rotted in the ground, which I've never seen, mm. and that's not, I don't have a drainage problem, the soil that was in is not soggy, wet soil, like I did everything, just the ground was too cool because the air was cool. It was just cool. It was just unseasonably cool in June. Yeah. And also I had uh, a little more slugs and more, uh, I think yeah. I had uh, flea beetles. So plants got sort of decimated and I had to, so, you know, I've been through seasons like this before and don't give up. Don't get frustrated. Just, just replant. It's, it's not ideal, right? Ideally you want to plant everything you know, either very early in the year or like, you know, whenever that seeds, you know, it's recommended to plant. And then you just watch it grow and it gets bigger and bigger and it's great. It's just a wonderful feeling watching your garden grow. And it's really mm. demoralizing to see things just fail mm. because the, the 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 climate or the environment or whatever is just not cooperating with you. It's not being consistent with other years that were better. Right. Um, but all you can do is, you know, you give it a week, keep an eye on it. And if it's not growing, just replant. Just keep replanting until the thing starts to grow. <laughs> like my uh, kohlrabi would not grow, would not grow. And I, I planted some a couple weeks ago, and it's finally growing. That's frustrating, right? Yeah. But, you know, sometime in August, I'll have, you know, beautiful kohlrabi. I just won't have it as early as I'm used to. Right. Um, it's, it's better than nothing, but the yeah. main thing is to just keep your cool. Don't give up on that. Just keep if something's not working, just just keep going at it like a problem gambler and don't lose heart. Keep calm and garden on. And if you, yeah, that's a good motto. There you and if go. you're getting past problems, just tr- keep trying different things until they're under control. Yeah. And even if you lose the whole season because of that pest, write down everything you tried, and then next year try something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> everything you tried isn't working. So speaking of pests, how's, how's the last week been going? Well, uh, I've got all the insects under control in my garden, but uh, it's the bigger pests that are becoming. I've got a fence around mine. I've got a 10,000-square-foot 10, 10, garden, and that's about as much as I can manage by myself. And i got a fence around the whole thing. The fence has a mesh that's about, oh, I don't know, 2 inch by 3 inch, maybe a bit smaller than that. Right. And I would think that would keep – I know a porcupine can't – 
traditionally my biggest problems have been porcupines, rabbits, and deer. Mm-hmm. And I know a deer can jump that, mm-hmm. but my theory is that at least the deer will sort of come along, they hit the fence, and they'll just move. Right. They don't bother coming in unless yeah. they see something they recognize. Yeah. And I don't see any sign of deer. There's no hoof prints. I mean, I've got the soft mulch. So usually if the deer are in your gardens, you can see it because yeah. Yeah, they'll leave print, right? Yeah. There's been no evidence of that. And I, I make sure I smooth everything out. Any place I've been working, I'll smooth it out flat so that if there's a hoof print, I'll see it. Unless they're being extraordinarily courteous and only walking in the aisles between my garden beds. But I've never, when deer are in your garden, you can tell because they've, they've got their hoof prints everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And they'll walk in different places and you'll just see them. So I think it's probably rabbits. And I know rabbits can get through it because I, I went in there one morning and there was a rabbit in the garden. And I chased him and he, he ran through that mesh like it wasn't even there. <laughs> Like I expected him to see him in pieces on the other side, <laughs> cheese cutter. Um, but that wasn't the case. Yeah. He just went through it like it wasn't even there, and I was like, "Oh no!" And the amount of the kind of damage I'm getting is uh, sort of consistent with that. It's uh, just a little bit of grazing. I mean, if you get a porcupine in your garden, and I this whole section we're going to do in the show here today, I call this gardening in the wilderness, since it's really yeah probably of more inch. I mean, it's probably going to be funny for people that are, you know, if you're in the suburbs or in the city, you're way better off. If you're thinking of moving to the country to have more land so you can garden more, <laughs> don't. don't. Uh, well, I mean, don't. sure, do it. But yeah. I mean, understand that you've got a whole, sure, you don't have this, you've got more real estate. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, if, you're, if your property backs onto a forest like mine does, um, or if those, all these wild animals can get at your, your garden, You've got a whole list of problems now you never had. I didn't have any of these problems before when I lived in the suburbs. I had a beautiful garden. It wasn't as big as the one I have now, but, I mean, everything grew great. And the only thing I had to deal with was slugs and a couple of things. Like, it was just so minor, yeah. you know, peanuts compared to now. Uh, now I've got so many other things that are way more problematic. So I'm pretty sure it's a rabbit getting in there. I built a scarecrow. Because the, the birds were eating my strawberries, like one in every three strawberries had a bird hole in nice. it. And then once the bird hole would get in there, all, all the insects would be like, oh, oh yummy, yummy, yummy. <laughs> yummy. Uh, yeah. I think strawberry has a sort of texture that's kind of rough and prickly almost. If you, It doesn't bother us because we're big, but it's, if you ever look at a strawberry really closely, it's sort of spiny. Yeah. So I don't think slugs and things really like it too much. Mm. But once there's a little hole in it, <laughs> that's a whole nother game. Yeah, yeah. Gateway. So. Um, I had to put a net over all my strawberries, and that seems to have kept the birds down somewhat. Mm. And that's the first year I had that problem. The last two years, I didn't have a problem with birds eating my not a, I mean, I had birds eating my strawberries, but it was like, oh, those birds. You know, it wasn't one in every three yeah. being ruined. Yeah. It was just, it was so minor, I didn't mind sharing with them. Yeah, yeah. Read a lot of permaculture, they're like, oh, you share with nature. Which, it's a great idea. And if they're only taking 10%, that's fine. But, you know, if they're taking like half or 33%, that's, no, man. That's not fine. I'm not that generous. Yeah. <laughs> you know, not uh, forget it. That's not why I'm doing all this. Yeah, I've got some sort of rabbit in there every every night, I think, taking a little piece of something. And the scarecrow I put in my garden is so lifelike that it scares the hell out of me. I'll be, <laughs> I'll be working in there and I'll turn around and I'll see this because I put a head on it and everything. That's funny. And I, it's, it's about my size and I'll turn around and I'll scare the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, got a, it's a guy in a hoodie. Looks yeah. like you know, a bank robber or something like that. You're going to beat the snot out of that thing some night you're out there. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> maybe I'll take my rage out on. Yeah, yeah there you go. Anyway, it doesn't it hasn't seemed to have done anything to deter the rabbits. Um, and maybe it's kept the birds down a bit. I don't know, uh, but they're just still in there, and uh, I'm at my wits' end. It, you got to have a fence around your whole garden, but you also have to have a fence that's fine enough to keep rabbits out. Yeah. So I I don't. Um, mm. you know, it's, it's just that fence. So what I'm going to have to do is I don't even know if it makes any sense this year. Uh, maybe it does. I need to go around the bottom two feet of that fence all the way around, all 200 feet of it, and um, put a like a two or three foot high mesh fence that's 
finer than the one that's there. Yeah. To keep them, and it's got to be all the way to the ground, right? Mm. Uh, to keep them out. I mean, you'll read about stuff where they say, oh, just put some garlic in a blender with some water and spray that all over your plants and they won't like it. Yeah. Which it probably will work, but on the scale, I mean, if I had like two four by 10 garden beds, sure. Yeah. Because the problem with all those approaches is every time it rains, you got to reapply that stuff. Yeah. And you got to reapply it anyway because it just breaks down. So, I mean, every night, it's a, it's a big space. Yeah. <laughs> it just can't be out there spraying the whole thing. With, plus, I don't have that much garlic, but right. uh, spraying the whole thing with some weird spray every night. That's just not – it's on the scale I'm gardening at, you know, remember I'm trying to, you know, supplement my grocery bill. The whole the long term goal is to not have to buy any vegetables for an entire um, summer fall season. Yeah. So if you're going to do that, your garden needs to be large enough. And if it's large, um, these sort of like spray applications, they're not going to work. You no. you got to you got to keep everything out. You just got to keep everything out. And you can put traps in your garden, but I can tell you I've done that in previous years, and it's almost foolish. Because so you get, you know, I've trapped porcupines. That's a hard thing to handle, okay? You get a porcupine in a cage trap. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's it's a porcupine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's a hard thing to handle. And you got to get it far enough away that it doesn't come back. Yeah, or you got to yeah. take it out, you know, if, I, if you're up to that. Um, and, uh, and there's other ones. It's not the only one. Mm -hmm. It's not like the last porcupine on earth or the last, you know, so if I cage this rabbit and let's say I put him in my car and drove him 10 miles away, yeah. um, what, there's no rabbits left now? Yeah. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I've, I've tried to do it and it seems to be an ongoing, exhausting thing. It's so much easier to keep them out, especially mm. if you have young children because you can't have them see any of that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Yeah, because the you know rabbit in the cage. Even if you're not killing it, it's it's all distressed. It's it's crying. It's yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, you know, it's so not 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 the greatest thing for a young. Sneak child. out at five a.m. and get it out of your garden before your kids <laughs> get traumatized. It's just not. Uh, it's yes, ridiculous. We'll have to have we'll have to have uh, hunting in the garden. Hunting in the garden. There, I think that's a new show. <laughs> I guess if you were in a survival situation, hey, you could you pick it do? up so that the thing it stays in there. It gets like it comes in and doesn't get out. That'd yeah. be kind of handy, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then you recoup the calories that you lost. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Anyway, a fence is the way to go, but if you you got to put a fence down, it's got to be high and it's got to be fine. Certainly, a two by three mesh is not uh, adequate. Um, right. You know, I I sort of, well, that's about the size of a rabbit's head, so you know probably can't get the rest of itself through. A rabbit's head's about the size of your fist. Yeah. And I can, I don't even think I can get my fist through that mesh. No. To I can barely get it through. So, so how do they get the body through? I don't know. Yeah, exactly. So uh, it'll probably eat up too much time. But uh, what about you know, some some people's gardens they they do have nets over the top to keep bird. Is that that's to keep birds out? I assume. Yeah, the nets keep all the sort of. You don't birds bother out with there. that because yours is too big. Well, I have I have nets over my strawberries. Right. Um, but I mean, it, they're just laying on the ground, sort of thing. Right. Yeah, I mean, if yeah, if your garden's small enough, sure. But uh, mm. I would need a I'd need like a circus tent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> that and uh, airplanes coming in hallway. Uh, look out your right wind hand window there. There's Greg Otten's garden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Well, and I mean, I wouldn't want to prevent. Let's say there was a rabbit in my garden eating. Right. I wouldn't want to prevent an owl or an osprey from coming in and just executing that thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. There's an osprey that lives like yeah. like one house over, like in in the forest. But yeah. you know, let's say. 300 yards there's an osprey nest easily within range i hear that osprey all the time and it obviously has young because it makes a noise anytime any bird comes near it <laughs> it's like why don't you just protect me protect just yeah. hover it's all right here man come on in and maybe and just you can take. train it oh yeah. that's what i need one of those like you yeah. know those falcons the guys yes. that live, oh that would just be garden, the great garden falcon Oh, that would that would be great, man. I would love. It. I bet there'd be a good market for that. And yeah, we're getting sidetracked. Yeah, that would be the well, because the other thing. Some people say just keep a dog in your garden or keep some sort of animal in the in the yeah. in the enclosure. Um, but uh, if you could somehow get a yeah, like some sort of bird of prey that just hang out there, that would be a great symbiosis. Yeah, I'd be the way to. 
Well, you, you might find something. Why don't you Why don't you build an osprey nest? <laughs> uh, put it on a pole just outside you know your garden. They, they yeah, I know, them. I know. That wouldn't work very well. I need, I need. You got lots of trees, man. I, I would need a hundred foot high ladder, <laughs> and I'm not that brave. Telephone pole. Oh, forget it, man. Yeah. Have you ever been up a, a tall ladder like that? Yeah, I used to no work thanks. Forty foot ladders when I was in university. Oh and, yeah. Uh, oh man, nothing will inspire you to uh, get an education that we're like working on a forty <laughs> foot ladder. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. A, I'm not terrified of heights but yeah no i'm not a fan of being up that high no 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 it's definitely a, a younger person's game yeah. you lose your nerve as you get closer to For you know sure. your own, and once you become aware of your mortality <laughs> yeah maybe a drone maybe you can get a drone and just drone like, strike then you gotta fly it all the time a drone Weird. strike <laughs> We're way off topic here we are we're, we're like uh we, we're beyond way off topic but that's okay it was good yes. for a laugh. So I think you got us down. We were at fences when we jumped off the fence. Right. Oh, look, one, there was one last thing I was going to talk about. and Because uh, I think that's about does it for a guard. I'll have to do yeah. more on guarding in the wilderness. Uh, right. But uh, I don't know to, you know, to what extent uh, listeners are in that situation. It might mm. be a very uh, select few that are in that situation. Yeah, let us know if you're listening. Let us know, yeah, and, and if you have any solutions, I'd love. To, this is all new for me. I mean, I'm, you know, my my experience is about getting stuff to get growing and keeping the soil healthy and keeping the plants healthy. This whole like dealing with every wild animal in the world, mm. it's, this is new to me. I didn't grow up with it, yeah. and I'm not experienced with it. I, I moved to this property in 2011, and uh, yeah. you know, it, it really started becoming a problem last year. My first few years, I don't think like all the local animals knew, knew i was here or whatever yeah. or scared of me or yeah, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't have the kind of problems i have now yeah, now just, they're like this guy actually makes food this is delicious yeah you know, i could eat grass or i can eat this <laughs> what would you rather eat <laughs> grass tastes awful you ever tried to eat grass yeah no it's, i haven't oh i have it's awful <laughs> <laughs> that must have been a bad gardening year <laughs> I'm starving. <laughs> I was really hungry. Yeah, you were hungry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, the only the last thing I was going to talk about was because uh, I talked about composting last week, and I never talked about vermicomposting. Okay. Um, and uh, vermicomposting is this thing you'll see a lot of guys do it in YouTube. I've watched the videos, and I just can't seem to, you know, catch the the buzz. Uh, you you get a, a bucket in your in your garage. This is something you can do indoors. You get like a big plastic bucket in your garage and you okay. fill it full of um, red wiggler earthworms. And they they'll the guys on YouTube will usually give you, you know, uh, a a link to a place you can go to buy them. So you have mm -hmm. to buy worms. Did you get that? Buy worms. I got that. That sounds bad already. <laughs> buy worms on the internet. Yeah. And you put those uh, store bought worms in your. Um, I mean, they're a particular kind of worm that are, that are very. Uh, prolific and uh, so i'm break. putting i'm putting dirt in my garage and i need to buy worms for it got it check check yes and then you're going to put all your kitchen scraps um in there well that's going to smell good and i think you got to cut them up a bit too to help yeah. help things along uh -huh. and i mean it seems like almost like a ghoul you know like an aquarium mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, and you also have to have a drip tray underneath it, so like all the worm pee oh. <laughs> comes out. You, you gather that up, and that's that's like useful stuff too. You got to gather that. There, wait a minute, there's worm pee. <laughs> <laughs> there's this liquid that comes out that uh, I don't know exactly. I mean, that I think sounds, all... that sounds like a whole show right there. <laughs> I think it's just their their excrement. You know, their yeah, excrement. Yeah. A, a liquid, a liquid, uh, yeah. you know, part of the composition is, uh, I, you know, I don't know. Anyway, this stuff comes out, and yeah. you've got to collect it because you can't leave that stuff in there because it becomes rancid. So mm. you've got this sort of ongoing thing where the stuff's coming out, and and uh, every so often you you sort of change the soil over a bit, and you're supposed to get this really nice, beautiful black earth. Yeah, lovely. But I would imagine that after an entire year of doing that using your table scraps, you probably might get like, you know, a few gallons or something. Mm, mm. It just seems to me so much easier just to have a garden where worms want to be. Well, that and, would make sense. Yeah. I guess the the only one advantage I can, that comes to mind is you wouldn't have wildlife getting into it. Well, that, that's a, that. That, that, that would be it. Solution. 
Assuming a bear doesn't like rip open well, your door. <laughs> that's a good point right there. Like, yeah. That smells great in there. Yeah, yeah, that smells good. And it would be nothing for that. I don't know if you've ever seen those like Discovery Channel. <laughs> There, there was one channel where they were showing how strong a grizzly bear was, and they put uh, a stake or something under this huge rock. I mean, a rock the size of like a car. Oh, right? really? And just to see if the you know, yeah. they had to use you know they had to use a front end loader or whatever to, right. to lift, see if the bear could get at the stake. <laughs> and I mean, it moved the rock out of the way the, the way I'd wipe a book off my desk. <laughs> it just went like eh, and it was off. It was gone. That's how strong those things are. Yeah. Well, didn't you say you saw one running down the road recently? One ran across her street yesterday. My wife was in the kitchen and she started yelling. <laughs> yeah. We all went out and made a lot of noise. Yeah. And, uh, well, it was probably running to tell its whole family they need to come back and rip, rip up your fence. Let's rip that fence out and yeah. eat the whole thing. Take that out. No, we all went out and acted really macho and uh, <laughs> tried to scare the bear away like, like we could do anything. Yeah. Well, fortunately, black bears are a little more sane or... Generally speaking, they're... Um, Generally speaking. You know, but, I mean, my neighbor was probably... The neighbor that was closest to that black bear was in his backyard, and he was probably 30 feet from where the black bear emerged from the woods. Oh, really? Yeah, and he was working back there. Wow. And another neighbor was probably another 80 feet away mowing his lawn. Huh. That thing just went across the street. So, I mean, and this was, you know, uh, in the evening. Like, oh, wow. You know, supper time, sort yeah, of. Thing. yeah. Six o'clock. So I mean, that's brazen. That is. I may, maybe if anybody's got any crazy wildlife stories related to their gardening or things that have happened to them or things they've heard, go ahead and leave a comment on uh, maritimegardening.com/slash-zero-one-one for episode eleven and let us know, or share it on our uh, Facebook page or let us know because that would be uh, that'd be fun to hear. Black bears and a few things. Uh... I mean, those. I saw YouTube footage of one of those things. It climbed up a telephone pole. And it yeah. got electrocuted. Oh, I saw that. It fell off. I mean, it got electrocuted. I mean, the giant lightning bolt spark off the yep. pole. It yep. fell all the way to the ground, hit the ground, and ran. <laughs> I mean, that's tough. I did see that. I saw. I that. am not that tough. It was hard to watch, and I was like, I don't know what? anybody that tough. No, <laughs> nobody, nobody. It fell. It yeah. got electrocuted. It, it fell. To its death. It and was it got like 30 up. feet, right? I mean, at least. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. saw that, and I was thinking, man, that is that is tough. That's like superhero abilities. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so don't mess with them. Don't mess with them. <laughs> <laughs> That's a superhero. <laughs> if just, they, like, if they want your garden, they're going to get it. Yeah. 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 So. Luckily, I think they really don't want much to do with gardens. This no, time. They, they've got lots of berries in the woods and stuff. Is that what they're after? If they ever figure out my strawberry garden, it's over for me. Yeah. I don't know what they're doing right now. Hopefully, they're maybe just, I don't know, maybe they're killing baby deer or something. I don't really well, know that, what they're that doing. Could be, I don't know if they do that or not, but maybe they, maybe they do. Who knows? As long maybe. as they leave my strawberries alone, I don't it care. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. This was a, this was a great episode. <laughs> That's good. So... Uh, <laughs> So once again, yeah, thanks for listening, and I um, hope you enjoyed that. hope we didn't offend anybody. We probably did. We <laughs> apologize for that in advance. If, if you're composting in your garage, we do apologize. Uh, yeah. Well, but, I mean, do, uh, that's fine. Just do it. Hey, yeah, no, or let us know how it's working. Yeah, t- tell me how much you get. Yeah. How much, what do you get out of that? It yeah. doesn't seem like it's worth it to me. It seems like a lot of work for not a lot of return, but yeah. but maybe that's the solution for my not being able to compost in my... Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, I don't know. My wife would probably say, what are you doing? Yeah, I don't think so, Greg. <laughs> what yeah. are you doing? I don't think so. It stinks. Yeah. Uh, but I, something about the worms is supposed to not stink because they sort of <laughs> do something in there that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, Can... If someone's doing it, please let me know how it's... I would love to know. Yeah, let uh, us know. I've not tried this, so I mean, I'm, I'm giving you opinion, my opinion on something I've not tried. Full disclosure on that. Um, he, he's just being a uh, YouTube troller. <laughs> I'm trolling yeah. for fun. <laughs> uh, no, but, uh, it, so, no. so, yeah, so, please inform me. I, I would really like to know what the draw is, and, and if, I, if it's something I should be doing, uh, maybe, and then you know, yeah. uh, talk me into it. That'd be cool. great. No, that's great. No, that's perfect. Hey, we're we're always open to to new ideas and new thoughts, but. Totally. We try and have fun along the way. So, uh, yeah. So again, uh, thanks for listening. This has been episode eleven. You can find the show notes at maritimegardening.com/slash zero one one. 
Uh, we are wrapping this one up today, so uh, be sure to check and tune in next week, and we'll see you then. Thanks, Greg. Thank you for listening. All right.